All right, we're back. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Monday, Thomas joins us uh, to, to look at uh, the World Cup. Of course, uh, a very interesting games that have held so far in Qatar. I miss um, a lot of complaints, especially from the Western media. Um, but the biggest stories are the upsets that have held or occurred in that World Cup so far. Uh, we're talking about games featuring Argentina and Germany. You have, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, Argentina losing 2-1 to Saudi Arabia. Germany losing 2-1 to Japan, of all countries. Um, the Ghanaians should have won 2-1 yesterday, but hey, FIFA did their thing. And they ended up losing 3-2. Uh, Monday Thomas is a sports analyst. Uh, joins us live from Aquabum State uh, at State Capital Oyo. Monday, it's great to have you. Uh, I would have said happy Friday, but let me say happy Qatar 2022. Happy World Cup. <laughs> All right, of course, it's, it's a great World Cup. And I mean, the World Cup where we are seeing not just one of the greatest uh, upsets in world football, but two of them. I mean, first of all, we started against Argentina. And before that game, Argentina did not lose their past 36 games. I mean, they were unbeaten. They were looking to equal the record of 37 unbeaten games, which is uh, currently held by the Italian side. And guess what? Saudi Arabia, a uh, side that are always getting whooped in their first opening match day of a World Cup game. I can remember in 2002, they were beaten eight goals to nil by Germany. In 2018, uh, Russia scored six goals past them, and it is 2022, and they pulled up one of the greatest upsets in uh, uh, world football by beating Argentina two goals to one. Germany, of course, thought they had it against uh, Japan. Japan scored two quick goals to, of course, uh, overturn that particular one and beat Germany by two goals to one. And you talking about upsets. We thought we were going to see that from the Black Stars of Ghana. Actually had an open mind to that particular game. They had a game plan in the first 45 minutes. Otto Odo, was it so brilliant? I don't think so because football, they say the best, the best way to get things done, the best form of uh, defense is uh, attacking. All right, but he, he was able to defend throughout the first 45 minutes. Uh, the Black Stars were just sitting deep, and goodness, they were able to stop the Portuguese from scoring in the second 45 minutes, six or something minutes on the clock. They are doing everything right, and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo goes down in the penalty box, and the referee points to the sport. Sunny Sue was complaining, the man that was comfortable that I didn't touch Cristiano Ronaldo. I didn't touch Cristiano Ronaldo. They didn't even take a look at the VRR. And I thought, why didn't they take a look at the VRR? I mean, this, this guy inside here complaining that that is not a foul. You should take a look at the VRR. I mean, that's what has been happening, right? But th they did not. Maybe because it was Cristiano Ronaldo and they were just waiting for him to break that record. And when you know, when it comes to record, Cristiano Ronaldo loves to chase them. And is the first player in world football to score in five consecutive World Cups. Congratulations to him. But I don't think that penalty was a penalty completely although we've seen it given i can take your mind still in this tournament where iran um uh, committed a very great blunder in the box against the english national team actually it was harry Maguire that was held in the box but that was not given as a penalty the same thing happened a day later and that was saudi arabia against argentina yeah the saudi arabian player held an argentine player the same way harry Maguire was held some days ago and it was pointed to the sport so we so, don't get to see yes I mean, so like it wasn't even it wasn't even as as bad as the one of harry Maguire, where he was being held and talked uh you know it wasn't even as yes, bad as that it's not, it's not even as bad as that so i think fifa are not doing the right thing when it comes to especially i think that is one of the most controversial issue right now in this world cup but for the rest of the action i am enjoying myself and i'm also enjoying african countries playing kofi i tell you for sure uh cameroon they put up a great performance against switzerland if not for a cameroonian born brill and bolo scoring against his <laughs> home nation and then and he, 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 ref he refused to to celebrate and just celebrate he apologized and i'm hearing rumors I, I know this this cannot be true but people are already peddling this false information uh, that the father of Bill and Bolo has been arrested in Cameroon. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, Paul Bia can just make a call from uh, Switzerland where we hear he normally spends a lot of his time to say, uh, arrest him. <laughs> now, his know. father stays in Cameroon. His father resides in Cameroon. So yeah. it's very easy for people to check him out and say, why did your son do that? You know you know what happened? You know what happened uh, after the, uh, I think it was the 2006 
or 2004 Nations Cup where uh, General Robert Gay uh, of Cote d'Ivoire, then uh, military leader of Cote d'Ivoire, you know, arrested the entire uh, uh, Les Elephants, the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. After they performed abysmally at the Nations Cup, he told them, you know, just take these guys inside. <laughs> you know, it they says, just scammed us, right? <laughs> it happens. African football for you. You know, African football. For okay, so, so, um, the, the upset, the upsets, uh, let's start with Saudi Arabia, Argentina. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I'm sure you've never seen Saudi Arabia play that way before. Uh, in the mix is a certain uh, Harvey Reynard. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about oh, the, wow. the, the tactical argument of Harvey Reynard. All right, I listened to Harvey Reynard's uh, post match conference and he was still giving credits to the Argentine. But one thing he was discrediting them was uh, because uh, they did not come with the mentality that they were coming to play a tough game. They thought it was just going to be a walk in the park. But, uh, you know, football, it can be very easily played on the papers. But when it comes to the picture of play, it all boils down to the mental fortitude. It all boils down on how much you can match your opponent. And I think Saudi Arabia were not lucky in that game. They deserve a victory. They deserve all three points. They were able to match Argentine power for power, pace for pace, skill for skill, tactic for tactics. Although Argentine, they had the most possession of the ball, but the Saudi Arabians, of course, so what do you need to do? I mean, football is a game where uh, favor is only granted to, to those with impeccable execution. They had just two shots on target, and two of them was in the back of the net. That's how you, you get brutally uh, clinical. And that's what gives you the victory in a, in, a, in a stage like this, which is the World Cup. Argentine, they had so many touches on the ball, but no penetration. They were not able to penetrate against the Saudi Arabia. And I think this, uh, the Argentine starting this tournament as favorites, uh, uh, by the way they played against Saudi Arabia, I'm not thinking they are favorites anymore because the next game is against the next two games against Mexico and Poland. Hmm. So if you can't beat Saudi Arabia... I'm, I'm sure you can't beat Mexico, who are very familiar with you, Argentina. You can't beat Poland, who, of course, have got some considerable amount of stars in that particular sport. So I'm tipping Argentina to be the biggest flop, although this was not my uh, thought when the, seat, when the World Cup uh, was about to start. But right now, the way Argentina played, they have the ball, they have the position, but what's position without penetration? It's quite embarrassing. But for the Saudi Arabians, prolific performance. I mean, not, not I mean, Compared to the Japanese, who of course uh, just just had maybe the last just had uh, two shots on target as well, and they were able to make it to near about for the Argentine, it is quite a bigger win for the Saudi Arabians because Argentina had gone 36 games unbeaten. But let's also talk about the Japanese side. Germany heading to this World Cup, they've not been really good. They don't have the strike force. We used to call them German machines, the effective German machines. But in 2022, it all started in 2018. That's when they lost their, their machineries. That's when they lost their arsenal, getting knocked out by South Korea. And now they are on the risk of getting knocked out again because losing your first game to Japan. And leading to this competition, Germany played against Oman in the friendly game, their last friendly game. And guess what? Oman, I mean, not even a football country by any means, but they were just able to score one scrappy goal past Oman. And uh, you are going to the World Cup where you're going to face strong oppositions in, in, in people in countries like uh, Japan and the rest. And you, you go there to, you know, I don't think Germany are not going to go for that, right? We, we should wait for more upsets. And for the African teams, they are the ones that will pull up another upset. Today, uh, it's not going to be an upset if Senegal beat Qatar. But I'm thinking Africa will get it to the semifinal. At least, at least two African countries will make it to the quarterfinals. And at least one will make it to the semi-final in this competition. Oh, yes. I love, I love the determination. I love the grit. I mean, look at how they were able to uh, stop the team from scoring the first 45 minutes. Tunisia, Morocco, uh, no African team considered in the first 45 minutes. Yes, I'm right for that, and mm -hmm. uh, that is brilliant. But but it's, it's, it's also it's, true that be, before before the Black Stars scored, no African team had scored any single goal. You know, apart from those two goals, we know we're not scoring. Mm -hmm. that's what that's what it is i mean uh, it, it had to be a west african side kofi i've got to celebrate uh the, the black stars of ghana of course from west africa just like nigeria and they, they did greatly representing the african region scoring not just one goal 
but a two goal. So let's but, 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 but is that, no, is that no worrying for you that, you know, Senegal hasn't scored, Cameroon hasn't scored, Morocco hasn't scored, Tunisia hasn't scored? It's worrying, but when you, when you take a look at some teams, you got to cut them some slacks. The likes of uh, Senegal, I mean, it was a crushing blow when uh, Sadio Mane was uh, ruled out of the tournament. Yes, because I think if Sadio Mane was available against the Netherlands, Senegal would have been more dangerous. The Lions would have come out playing. So the Senegalese are still playing as they should. They just lost concentration. You saw that game, Evie did. Uh, yeah. Edward Mendy was culpable for the two goals. I mean, a goalkeeper who hasn't been informed mm. in his uh, club for Chelsea went to the World Cup, and it was the same story. If not for Edward Mendy's mistake, I don't think the, uh, the Dutch side would have uh, gotten, gotten two so, goals uh, past the uh, Senegalese side. So this, this, word, this uh, what you've said now, la lapse in concentration, um, uh, you look at Senegal, um, and you just said they played well against the Netherlands. They were in control, actually, of, of, of parts of that game. You look at Switzerland versus uh, 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 um, uh, Cameroon. The Cameroonians played well. They had chances. You had uh, Chupa Moting had a chance to score. And then the guy who plays for Brentford also had a chance. He could have squared it to Chupa Moting. They, they, they didn't play badly at all. Um, you look at Morocco versus, versus Croatia. They didn't play badly at all. Um, do you think African football has a problem? Because the Asian countries, Japan, they've won three points. Saudi Arabia, they've won three points. <laughs> but the African countries that seem to have the players in Europe can't win. What's the problem? Is it lack of concentration? Because I don't see, I see teams play beautiful football, pass the ball around, have skillful players, but there is no end product. All right, so, what's the problem of Africa? Yeah. I think I'll start yeah. with mentality, and I'm going to go back to yesterday's game the black stars of ghana they had uh in the first 45 minutes i know it's a game plan of the coach sometimes to sit back and defend but that's not how you win games i mean mm. imagine if they, had, if they had thrown everything at the portuguese side from the first blast of the whistle i know the portuguese are the better side on the paper but i like i said if you, you've got the right mentality if you've got the uh, ability to think that you are going to last with these players you're going to match them power for power toe for toe I think the Blasters of Ghana should have just poured out against the Portuguese side. They did that in the second 45 minutes, and it bore fruit. They got two goals. They attacked against, especially after they conceded a goal, which for me is still very controversial. Cristiano Ronaldo converting from the penalty spot. They went all out. Uh, they are you the captain, leading from the front, getting the equalizer. And yes, they were not able to even defend for at least the next five minutes. I just stepped outside. And the next thing I'm hearing, Portugal have scored again. I'm like, from where? Even Dede Ayu did not finish celebrating when he was substituted. He was just maybe, congrat okay, his, his uh, teammates were congratulating him. And he turns back and he sees that Juan Felix have made him two goals to nil. So what matters right now is that do not be scared of these people. Refuse not to be bullied. Because that's, that's their problem. They just let this European country bully, bully them. And uh, the same thing happened against Switzerland. Cameroon were looking really good. Chipo Moti had scored in, the, in his last seven games. He had scored six goals for the Bayern side. He was their top man, their tallest man. He had a chance where he should have just taken it. But I think he didn't really will have enough confidence. For me, he should have held that ball because the player defender was very close to him. He should have just maybe cut back or something. The defender would have just maybe went away. But he just went on for a show, which was very easy for the goalkeeper, Jan Sommer. So I think it's a matter of confidence for uh, the a confidence issue for the African side. They, they need to believe in themselves, especially the Cameroonians. I mean, they have what it takes. They have what it takes. They have a, a very solid precedent. Fega put uh, President Samuel Eto'o, who's talking tough, he has already predicted Cameroon to play in the final. That is what they should build on. The mentality needs to be right. The Senegalese side, you'd say without money, uh, they wouldn't go any further. But I think that's a lie. They've got Ismail Saar, who's, been, who's, been, who's doing uh, tremendously well. They played against the Dutch side, who were uh, the toughest opponent. And now they're up against Ecuador and uh, Qatar. Right. Today they take on Qatar. So All that right. should be a straight win for them. So, 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 so a straight win. yeah, M Monday, Thomas, uh, uh, I'll just ask you two double-barrel questions. First, this, which, which team do you tip to really uh, uh, create the next upset? Uh, in the World Cup, the next upset in the World Cup, and then uh, which teams do you predict to to lead the trophy? I mean, uh, Brazil were on fire yesterday. You know, I saw I saw flashes of um, 
a team that can win that cup. Uh, France have been on fire. Spain have been on fire. Um, uh, who give me the teams you're predicting to lift the trophy? Uh, All right. Top, I three, top yes. three teams. Top three teams. Top three contenders of this year's World Cup. Number one, Brazil. Number two, England. Number three, France. Argentina were on my list, but now they are no way to be found. <laughs> Another upset that we are going to get is an African team making it to the semi-final. That would be an upset, right? Because I'm, I'm thinking Senegal, with the way they played against the Dutch side, they're already through to the round of 16. And if they do the right thing, they'll make it to the semi-finals. Cameroon, uh, I've still got Sabia and Brazil to play. I don't see them getting past the Brazilian side. Like you said, they were on fire yesterday. Richarlison, who has uh, scored the goal of the tournament already, in my opinion, that was a great strike. And uh, for the upsets, I don't think we are going to see any upsets anymore because teams will now be very careful. You know, it was the first round uh, game and uh, maybe big, bigger countries were underrating the smaller ones. Uh, but I'm, pre I'm pretty sure in the second round and in the third round, no one is going to give a chance for that. So no more upsets. But in the, in the knockout stages, it's going to be an exciting one. And I'm tipping Africa, Senegal, like I said, to make it to the semifinals and maybe another African country, Ghana, They've got what it takes to, of course, uh, uh, get past that particular group and see them in the round of 16. Because, as, by the way, Ghana played in the second 45 minutes. They need to stop playing like that in the both halves of their next game. All right. Monday, Thomas, is always a thrill having you. I see your shirt. I see your shirt. Um, <laughs> keep up the good job. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but, of course, you know, Tite you know, is not playing my boy. James, I, I, it's okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> We need to give him a call and talk to him. But I mean, with Richarlison <laughs> playing so well, I don't know if uh, uh, Gabriel. Miguel, I yeah, mean, that, 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 that team is star studded. I mean, the great Neymar it was is, even was substituted. Neymar was sent Neymar, to the bench. He, yeah, Neymar, Neymar got injured, you know. Neymar got injured. So uh, they are still taking a look. Surgery will be done today. And before the end of the day, we'll know if Neymar has uh, been ruled out. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. We pray he's not. All right. Thank you so much, and I uh, hope to have you again on the program sometime soon. Have a wonderful weekend, and enjoy the Kofi, rest of the World Cup. Ghana, wish Ghana the best, because I'm supporting Ghana somehow, because of you, all right? So. <laughs> uh, right, let's see how it goes. Thank you, Monday Thomas Sports and listen. That's the size of our package right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Please follow us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And we have a second YouTube account, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. On behalf of everyone, on our team, technical uh, uh, staff, uh, the production staff, um, program staff, my name is Kofi Bartels. We return on Monday. Good morning. <laughs>